It's 2016, and that means Tales from What to Play 2015 is upon us. In this installment, we will not be looking at the overall winner. You'll have to wait for that. This episode I like to call Friends Tell Storm What to Play. While one of these games received a number of votes, both have been long-time requests from real-life friends. For some reason, their requests carry a little more weight. The first candidate is Bastion. Now, anybody can just tell me to play Bastion, but a real-life friend bought it on Steam and then gifted it to me. If I don't play it, then I'm wasting his money. And if he never bought it for me, I continue to know nothing about it, because I've never heard of it before. Real Life Friends told me this game was only about three hours. Like Portal. And as fate should have it, my play experience was very much like Portal. Funny story. Back when I worked programming gambling machines, I put in some extra hours getting a slot game ready for the 2009 trade show, so my manager granted me the day off after driving in the next morning. I went back home and since I just completed the Dewey's Adventure Adventure, I could start working on Portal. I turned on my 360 and began playing it for the first time, and about half an hour in, I was beginning to groove with it. This is one of the greatest pieces of software ever compiled. Then my phone rang. What? The slot game was crashing on the trade show floor. I drove back to work and spent the rest of the day debugging. Something similar happened with Bastion. I drove to work, different work, like any other day, and arrived to an empty parking lot. I guess we have the day off? Nobody told me it was a floating holiday, but I was not offended. I then sped home. My secondary thought was I can start working on Bastion. My primary thought was Sarah is at work and Yale is at daycare. The house is gonna be silent! I set up my laptop next to the AC, jacked in my wired Xbox One controller, and set out on a journey that is Bastion. The only loose end was the phone could still interrupt. I lost it for the day. Bastion begins with your character, the kid, waking up in bed just in time for the cataclysm, and is narrated out of the door. Uh, this is cool. The world forms around you. It's isometric, like... Um, don't say Diablo, you might think I've played it. Oh, uh, Super Mario RPG. The art style is really bold, looks hand-drawn. This is great. And, wait, are my specific actions being narrated? <laughs> Good job, guys. Impressed in 30 seconds. Close range and distant combat is taught on your way to what will become the main hub of the game, the Bastion. The point of our excursion is to explore what remains of the outlying lands and find crystals to restore the Bastion to full power. Each area has new enemies to fight and form a strategy, and a new weapon to help you along the way. That's the real strength of Bastion, keeping everything new. All the levels are incredibly diverse, and enemy encounters keep you on your toes. You won't get stuck with a weapon you don't like. You'll get a chance to swap it out. And there are a lot of weapons, all the way up to the end. And I really like the world building up around you. This way you always know what ground you already tread. Bastion is an independent game. It is Supergiant's first game. This is all true, but we need to keep a level head before heaping on praise. Independent games are much like independent films. Most of them are garbage. It's the ones that gain attention due to an unusual level of quality that makes you think, oh, independent is the way to go. No, large studios exist for a reason. Keeping all this in mind, Supergiant Games knocked this one out of the park. I was able to complete it in one sitting, and that was a joy. I haven't been able to do something like that in an eon. It felt a little longer than three hours. Let's check the steam count. Five hours. Hmm. Well, this is real time, so it includes the piss breaks. After I beat the game and the credits rolled, I felt a twinge of confusion. I was thinking, oh, I don't understand the plot. Which is not hard for me to say. If a Bond movie has too many villains, I start to fade out. But no, I started to recall. Cataclysm was the apocalypse. The Bastion is there in case of emergency. We constructed our own demise. Zephyr, or Zardoz, or whatever his name was, merely responded to our actions. Always knew up a stream reader inside of a using block. What really caused the confusion was the binary choices on the way out. It's not choose your karma. That would be highballing it. They are really choose your nothing. The two choices are basically, how do you want to walk out of here, and what illustrated still do you want to see before we play the guitar really slow? And on that note, pun crucified, those songs! One is introduced as sort of an anthem of demise in the middle of the game, and the other plays over the credits as I play something else. You want to know my musical taste? Not that! I don't think the songs are bad, and I'm sure some odd people actually enjoy listening to them. But for me, if it doesn't have a double kick pedal, it usually isn't worth my time. The real question is, did I have fun? Well, yeah, a lot of fun. 
I tested all the weapons and found my favorites. Of course, one of them is the elephant gun. Then I hooked up on New Game Plus to get a second crack at crushing my foes. On the next playthrough, I checked out all the side quests and went to the shrine to enable the idols that incrementally make the fight more difficult. I guess you could say I like the game because it isn't easy, like clearing a hack and slash game on a higher difficulty. But more specific, you have to meticulously kneecap yourself. So you're always playing at the level that is just right for you. You're going to take a ball peen to the face, but you have to fine tune the speed of your swing. Uh, okay, that could be the quote. After a short while of playing, I realized that I had heard of Bastion and seen screenshots. At work, uh, first work, someone brought in a gaming magazine and was reading about Bastion a year before its release. I know, a magazine. We were barbarians back in 2010. I then started a discussion with a fellow engineer about independent game development for the 360. He said if he did something like that, he'd do it just for fun. I respectfully disagreed. If I did something like that, I'd be in it for the money. Well, years later, I did develop a game for the 360, and we all know how that went. <laughs> Next candidate, The Last of Us. Upon announcement, it was immediately dismissed by me. Oh, Naughty Dog, the guys behind the murderous Nathan Drake. This would be good stuff. Wait, zombies? Never mind. But somehow, in this swamp of zombie games that nobody asked for, the Last of Us turned out rave reviews. It got a few votes for TSW TP 2015, but I have a few friends who loved it on the PlayStation 3 insisting I give it a shot. And since I'm the only one with the PlayStation 4, the remastering renewed their suggestions. I pushed back with, I don't do zombie shooters. One friend insisted, it's not really a zombie shooter. Okay, I'll fall into this trap. My prejudice of a PlayStation franchise proved incorrect before, and I ended up a huge fan. Then again, my prejudice proved correct in a different instance, and now I use it for cathartic expression. Oh boy, I can't lose! So in this remastering, we'll get a better field of view, a better frame rate, better texture resolution, and it really shows here. Oh, no, this is just a pre-render. We started helping out with the mortgage then. Mortgage? Ugh, so glad I paid that off. The night of the first zombie invasion sees Joel and his daughter, Sarah, escape their home break-in and get away with Joel's brother. Here you play audience to the initial wave of horror as there isn't much to do or control until the SUV gets T-boned. Now you have to carry Sarah trying to find safety. And as all this wears on, something begins to really bother me. Sarah is not the young lady on the cover. Oh no. No, 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 no. This game has child kill- Truth be told, I watched this happen in remote play on my Vita, and even with a small presentation, I got the full emotional impact. And as a parent, seeing this stuff made me want to go puke in the corner. Okay, on a normal day, I do not want to puke in the corner, and I'd much rather spend my time with things that do not make me want to puke in the corner. So understand why I'm screaming, SCREW THIS GAME! Uh, let's trudge on. 20 years later, whoa, that's quite a jump. Like when the man-ape throws the bone up in the air and then suddenly we're looking at spaceships orbiting Earth. I know I reference that movie a lot. It's only because I hate it so much. This secondary introduction level does an excellent job of exposing us to the world that Joel lives in. The zombie presence has forced the remaining government to impose martial law and a group called the Fireflies is fighting that governance. Low supplies of food has led to ration cards, which has become an underground currency. Everyone is trying to survive in a shithole, so naturally we have to fight one another. I don't know. Someone just tried to take out Joel's friend, and they head out to pay him back. Like I said, a very good job. This is setting up the world we're playing in. Eventually, you run to a spore cloud, and it is quickly explained that this is the cause of the zombie freakout. And what do we find in there? Some zombies. And what do we do to them? Shoot. Kill the zombies by shooting them in the head. They can eat you if you make them dead. Also in your way is the opposing non-undead. So, Nathan Drake tactics. Cut to the chase, you have to smuggle this girl out of the city and eventually across the country. I'm sorry, the zombie craze has to be so frustrated it's hard for me to organize my thoughts. I think I've spent sufficient time recognizing that when a quality studio develops a zombie game, you'll get a quality zombie game. However, that's an oxymoron. This is the zombie apocalypse. I never saw the appeal, and I failed to understand how it continues to sell. 
Zombies, a lame and lazy excuse for an enemy, and far from original. Apocalypse, where is this considered fun? All civilization gets thrown back to the Stone Age, but still we find time to hate one another? I'm convinced that I've become out of sync with the rest of the world because Teen Apocalypse is the go-to entertainment for the unwashed masses. Let's take a look at some of the recent teen novels about kids killing each other deemed good enough to turn into movies. Okay, there's Maze Runners and its sequels, Divergent and its sequels. Shit, even The Giver was revived so it could join in. They were chucking euthanized newborns into dumpsters in that movie. And no list would be complete without the bile most lovingly known as The Hunger Games. You know, it was a hard fought race, but Hunger Games pulled through and beat out Pan's Labyrinth as most depressing turd of a movie. God, I, I don't get it. We fight these games in remembrance of the war. <laughs> okay. What does one have to do with the other? I got an idea. If we ever have to rebuild society, here's my first rule. Let's not force the young, healthy members to murder one another. All right, we good? And then we just build from there. Maybe I'm wrong in my dislike of Sarah's death. They're just giving us what everybody wants. Remember when I said you're tasked with escorting Ellie, by the way, her name is Ellie, out of the city, then across the country? Yeah, believe the hype. You're getting sidetracked to the fullest. Let me break this down. At the end of chapter 1, the people you are to meet up with aren't there. At the end of chapter 2, they aren't there. Chapter 3 was kind of nothing, and if you fail, you get to witness another child murder. At the end of chapter 4, they are there, but then Joel decides to invalidate all of his hard work, and the story ends in one big transcontinental screwed up circle. How is this zombie shooter, yes it's a zombie shooter, special enough to make it a massive success and acclaimed by critics? What does it offer? I know, it was the weapons crafting. Yeah, those nail bombs were pretty funny. No, no, there is something the game undeniably delivers. And that is, hold on, let me grab my puke bucket from the corner. The atmosphere. Everything comes together on this. Level design, art style, graphics, character development, dialogue, acting, and the nerve wracking gameplay. The Last of Us puts you right there. They made a zombie apocalypse and you feel it. And I don't think they ever say zombie, instead infected. That's because zombie does not sound real. But what you might see as praise, I see as exactly the problem. Don't think wrong of me, I like games with atmosphere. And why? Because Samus kicks Metroid Prime's ass. Cameo defeats the Goblin King with style. Doom guy blows a hole in the spider mastermind. Which Doom? Uh, both? James Sunderland. I'm sure something was resolved with some measure of success. I'll play that game someday. The point is, Atmosphere has to have some payoff. The reason why it will submit to immersion of this world. Zombie apocalypse? At the end, everyone is still sucking shit. The body count is catastrophic. Nothing can fix this. There is no hope. I don't want that atmosphere. <sighs> no matter how much logical sense I'm making here, I know this is going to stand next to my statements against alcohol. Storm is just a hedonist. To make my patented quote for this game, I'm not going to do the whole hate on a game and then give it a good rating, I've done that enough. I guess the best I can say is, when it comes to zombie games, The Last of Us is on top of the pile, but that pile is extremely shallow. <sighs> what impact can this review make? I'm not going to undo its success. Hell, I knew I wasn't going to like the game and even I own a copy, but little good that will do because I'm never playing this game again. Oh, I feel a recurring joke forming. I'm never playing this game again! And I just killed the recurring joke. When I reported my disappointment back to my friends, it was a very civil discussion. We can disagree and still be friends. Disagreeing with people on the internet? Uh, that's when I get nervous. Oh, I just want to avoid the annoyance. Can I take it all back? How dare I criticize such a well-made game?